Hey, what's up, everyone? Um, welcome back. Welcome back. Uh, yeah, a little behind schedule for me. Sorry about that. I was a little um, working a little bit, lost track of time. But I'm here to talk about today's lesson. All right, today's lesson is an intro to electromagnetism. Okay, the fact that we can use electricity to create magnetism. We can use magnetism to create electricity. Um, so first and foremost, guys, if you checked out the assignment, somebody commented already. So shout out to um, shout out to Sal. Sal said that the link, one of the links wasn't working. Um, it was a hardcore publisher link. It takes you to electro uh, magnet and electromagnet activity. He said the link is not working. Um, so I'm going to double check right now on the assignment. I'm going to open up the classwork here. And uh, hopefully everyone's checking their assignment for today. Got in there. So I'm going to open up the electromagnetism virtual stations assignment. Okay. Now in that assignment, there's two things. There's the slides. Um, you're going to use those slides to um, answer the explain questions. So it's going to ask you for an explanation about why things are happening as you go through each station. Like I said, if we were in um, a classroom, like I said last video, if we were in the classroom, we would have done this as stations. You would have visited each different station, done the activity hands-on. But we're not in the classroom because of the coronavirus. So you're virtually going to examine either animation, a picture, or this computer simulation, which we're going to see if that's working right now. So I'm clicking on the Google Doc assignment. It's popping up right now. So, Sal, your question was on station number, because station one is just an animation. Station two is just an animation. Station three says, number one, go to this link. I'm going to click on the link. Let's see what happens. All right. So the link comes up for me. It says, click to enable Adobe Flash Player. So I click it and it says block or allow. I'm going to click allow. Um, and it's working for me. It's working for me. Uh, so guys, if you tried this, this activity, yeah, it's working for me. I can add batteries to my electromagnet. It's tell me I need to pick up 21 paper clips with this electromagnet. I could add batteries. I could add coils, coils of wire along that nail. I could take away and basically got to find out, okay, how many batteries did I need and how many coils of wire did I need to pick up? For me, it says 21 paper clips, but for you, it's going to be different. It's different for each person. And you click it on and it tells you if you made it or not. So you keep playing around with that. So this is station three and it gives you a hint. If you click on hint, if you click on hint, it says each battery picks up five paper clips. Each set of 10 coils, so the coil wire, will pick up three paper clips. Okay? So it works for me, guys. It works for me. Um, and it worked for you, Thomas. I don't know if it worked for trick shots. So Thomas is doing the assignment now. So, Sal, hopefully it worked for you. If for some reason it's not working for you, the link worked for me, it worked for Thomas. If it doesn't work for you, just send me an email and let me know. And that way, when I go in and grade your assignment, I'll know why you didn't fill out the observation questions. But guys, you could still out, fill out the explain question because the explain questions is from your notes. So trick shots, you haven't tried it yet. That's fine. Don't worry about it. When you try it today, it's working for Thomas. It worked for me. Hopefully it works for you. Um, and use the hint. Use the hint it gives you. So that's part one of the assignment. So, okay. So a couple people already turned it in, it looks like. And most people, it looks like, are still working on the assignment or haven't turned it in yet. All right. So, yeah. So a couple people turned it in, I see. And a couple people have not. I'm checking my classroom right now. All right. So, yeah. Okay. So that's that, guys. So a few people turned in, a few people haven't. But, you know, try it out. Let me know. 
Why did YouTube terminate my live stream yesterday? I don't know, man. It was weird. I don't understand. I think it's conspiracy. So I have no idea that was weird. On station five, Thomas says, I can't see the full picture on explanation question two. Let me go to station five. What's up, Jose? I'll get to you in a minute. So Thomas, let's look at station number five. Station five, go to the link. It's a YouTube video. Oh, the full picture. I don't know. I, you can't see the full picture? That is a full picture. Explain question two. Look at the animation of the inside of an electric generator, okay? What is being spun around? So it says slide number five. So you have to look at slide number five from the notes. That will give you the answer to that. You'll see something spinning around in the animation. And the next question, what does this create? As this is spun around, okay, and you see this voltmeter going like this, you see the V for voltage and the, the needle going back and forth. What does this create? Also, it says slide number five. Um, so, Jose, you woke up at 10.30 today. It's kind of late, man. Come on, Jose. At least it's better than, um, what was it the other day? You woke up at like 3? Something like that? 3 o'clock? So, 10.30 is better than 3. So, guys, let's talk about the station. So, we got a couple questions. Sal, thank you for the email about the assignment. Guys, send message through um, the classroom or emails if you have questions on the assignment. Yeah, I remember you woke up at 3 yesterday. I'll get back to you on that, okay? So, yeah, Sal, I got back to you. Uh, so that's that, guys. So, yeah, any questions on the assignment, let me know. The electromagnet thing's working for me. Um, so things are working for me, guys. Hopefully it works for you. Yep, everything seems to be fine. So, Thomas, I don't know why you can't see whatever, but it, I can see it. So it should hopefully be working, guys. Um, so let's talk about each station real quick, what you're supposed to be doing. Station number one. All right, so guys. So something like this, okay? Basically, station one is something like this. This is the live version. This is the one you would have been using in the classroom. Um, something like this. This is a galvanometer. Uh, it's measuring some microamps, okay? And so amps, so is there current flowing through this wire? Right now, if you look, there's no current. The needle is at zero, or it should be at zero. Probably have to calibrate this a little bit, which means make sure it's on zero, but it should be at zero. But it's a coil of wires, okay? And it's attached to this, this meter that measures amps. Um, yeah, and that's that. And so there's no current flowing through this because it's not hooked up to a source of voltage to push the current through. So there's nothing happening. But what's cool, what you just saw in class, but you could see it online through the animation. Let me see if I remember to bring. I brought some stuff from school before they closed it down. In anticipation, I don't know if I brought everything I need here. Let's see. Uh, come on, come on. Did I bring, did I bring the good stuff here? Oh man. I was hoping I brought a magnet, a strong magnet. It takes a strong magnet here to make this work. Well, let's see what I got guys. Here's a small, I got this small magnet here. No, that's not a magnet. My bad. Bummer. I don't know, guys. I thought I brought a magnet. But I'm looking through my stuff here. And unfortunately, I, for, I didn't get a chance to grab the magnet. So I was trying to grab a few things before school shut down. But it looks like I put the magnet aside somewhere else, not in the bag. That's That seems what. Let me check one more place. Uh, you guys are talking about video games. That's so great. All right. Let me, <laughs> let me check one more place. Hold up. 
Um, you see. Okay, guys, I can't find the magnet. I'm back. I can't find the magnet. But listen, uh, basically what happens, and you'll see it in the animation, is as you pass a magnet through this coil of wire, okay, I can't, I guess I did not bring the magnets. I must have left them back at school. I thought I had them with me. But you'll see it today. You'll see it today in the animation, but as you pass, what's cool is as you pass a magnet through the coil, you'll see that this registers some current or on the one in the animation, it'll register a little bit of voltage, um, but it'll go one way. So as you pass the magnet through one way, the voltage goes this way. As you pass the magnet back the other way, the voltage goes the other way. And if you just leave it in there, nothing happens. It'll just, It'll, it'll, as you put the magnet through the coil, as you put it through this coil, you'll see it just kind of move a little. But if you stop and you just leave it in there, it just goes back to zero. So what this means is and this guy Faraday was doing some experiments to figure this out, this smart scientist dude. And, and what he figured out was that by taking a magnet and moving it through a coil, see, you can't just push it in and leave it through the coil. He realized you had to move it again and again, back and forth, back and forth, through the coil of wires. Uh, just put that upstairs for me because I'm in the middle of something, okay? Thank you, Saraya. I'll be up in, in a little bit. Um, so what he realized is as you move it back and forth through the coil of wires, it has to move back and forth. You'll see that in the animation. Basically, you get this constant shift in back and forth of voltage, or in this one, it would show the current, shifting back and forth. And, and so what they discovered was alternating the magnet and moving it back and forth or in a modern generator, instead of pushing it back and forth, it spins it, it flips it. So the North and South pole keep flipping if I drew it up here, right? So we have a magnet with a North pole and a South pole. You're familiar with magnets. They have an end, right? If you try to put the North Next to another magnet that's north, they push away. The same will push away, kind of like when we talked about charges, the same repel. And all right, cool, man. Thank you, trick shot. And then if you switch a north to a south, they attract. So basically what he found was if you flip the magnet, keep flipping it, spinning it, so north, south, north, south, north, south, keeps flipping positions, or if you move it back and forth, whatever. Basically what they found is as you do that through a coil wire, it produces a electric current in this coil wire. So the magnetic field, so there's like these magnetic field lines. That's what's producing this magnetic force, these magne mag magnetic field lines. They're interacting in producing an electric field, okay? So they're making a, a current present in that coil of wires. Now, why a coil? Why not just one wire? So they also discovered and the reason they use a coil of wire instead of just one wire, they use a coil, is it makes it stronger. It makes the effect stronger. And this is part of what you'll see in your notes today, okay, and part of what you'll see in your notes. So that was what Station One is all about, the fact that we can take a magnet and create electricity with it by alternating the magnet, by alternating that magnetic field, that the magnetic field is basically that that magnetic kind of like force coming out from the magnet. We call it the magnetic field. So by alternating that, either by moving it back and forth real quick, so north, south, north, south goes through that, or by flipping it around real quick, so north, south, north, south, switch positions. The north pole, the south pole, the magnet, switch positions. You're switching that magnetic field, and you could produce – a electric current in that coil of wires and you could use that to power things and this is how a generator works but i'm getting a little bit ahead of myself here but basically that's station one checking out station one so station two the compass and wire okay was a way to investigate this basically 
if you take a compass, now the compass has a needle. And in the needle, there's a little magnet, okay? And that little magnet lines up with the magnetic, magnetic poles of the Earth. There's a north and south pole of the Earth. Magnetic north, magnetic south. So the Earth has a magnetic field around it. And so this little magnet in the compass will line up and it'll show you, okay, which way is north, which way is south. And so what happens is because we figured out that we can have a magnetic field generated, all right, um, through, so I'm getting a little bit, actually, let's talk about the opposite. So it, a magnet can create electric current, right? So they found out the opposite as well. So what happens if we have an electric current? So if we hook up some wires, right? We did this in class. We hook up some wires to a source of voltage, a battery. And, you know, what they what they found in the experiment you'll see in the, the, the in what we would do in class is if you lay the wire, okay, if you lay the wire over the compass and then you turn on the, um, the switch, if you have a switch to turn on the circuit uh, to make the current flow, okay, what happens is you'll see the needle move and you're going to see that in your animation today. And so they discovered, wow. What's going on here is there must be some sort of magnetic field being created that's affecting the magnet in this compass, this little magnet in the compass, right? Because only a magnet would affect that. So they found out the opposite's true. Not only can we use magnetism to create electricity, but the opposite's true. We can use electricity to create magnetism. So this wire laid across a magnet when when they turn on the the switch and electric electric current flows through the wire the compass needle moves and there's even a more drastic effect because again coils of wire so instead of one wire making a coil of wire and you put the compass in a coil of wire and try it, you'll really see this thing move around and so there's a stronger effect from that coils of wire um so Alternating, right? The magnetic field produces electric current, and you can see the alternation of this. And I should mention that how when you see in station one, this moves back and forth. We call that alternating current. That's where AC comes from. If you heard of AC versus DC, direct current from a battery, alternating current is the current your house gets, and it's produced that way. Okay, it's produced that way through generators produce an alternating current. Um, so the opposite's true. We can use electric current. So if we have, let's say, a wire and it's hooked up, let's say it's hooked up to a battery. So there's current, there's current flowing through the wire, those electrons flowing through. Well, what happens is that flow of current creates a magnetic field around this wire. And they discovered that by seeing how it influenced you know, compasses and other things around it. So you can make a magnet using electricity. And some of you may have done that before, actually. And in one of the stations, station number, let's see, that was station, yeah, the next station, station three, right? You get to actually do electromagnet. So they have, you know, like a, they have like a nail right, with a coil of wire around it. Now, why coils of wire? At this point, you know a coil of wire makes the effect stronger. So the more coils of wire I put around this, the stronger my electromagnet will become. Likewise, the stronger the current flowing through these wires. So if I add more batteries or stronger batteries, the stronger the magnetic field, creating that magnetic force to pick up paper clips or whatever, in your notes, you'll see like a picture of a big one. They have big electromagnets that pick up cars like at junkyards and things like that. Um, so more voltage creating a stronger current. So the stronger the current, the stronger that current flowing through the wire, the stronger the magnetic field. The more coils, the stronger the magnetic field. So we could hook this up to a battery and you hook this up 
positive negative end to a battery and you could pick up paper clips with it or whatever it's not going to be very strong because you're only using you know a nine volt battery or something like that or even less 1.5 volts but the stronger the battery you hook it up to hey what's up brandon the stronger the magnetic field would be um so electricity can create magnetism magnetism can create electricity right um so what happens is besides doing cool things like making making compasses move or um let me see you know measuring the effect on a galvanometer making compasses move besides all these picking up uh picking up uh paper clips or whatever besides all these nifty little things right there's actually real purpose applications with this and this is really the next part station four the electric motor station four so if you take a motor an electric motor not a gasoline motor right so electric motor like this came from like a fan or something the power of fan to spin a fan so it had the wires that went out to the outlet the alternating current produced by some generator somewhere that has shift in magnetic fields magnets spinning and creating electric current current goes through the power lines comes to your house we talked to the electrician a bit about how that works last week so you can rewatch that video um so we take the electric motor if we open this up so you'll see a picture so check this out what do you notice this is one of your questions on your sheet so yeah brandon exactly so coils of wire coils of wire yes brandon you got coils of wire right so again why coils of wire so how this motor works and it, let's take it apart a little more if i can let me see if i could get this there we go more coils right more coils on this side coils on this side and they rotate let's see if i could spin this well, they don't rotate something. Let's see if I can. Oh, okay. Got it. Now I've really done it. Okay, guys. So, coils of wire, right? Rotating. Something's rotating. What's rotating? What is this all about? What is this rotating? Okay. What is this all about that rotates? All right. So, an electric motor. If you look, right, you go, this is station number four. All right, station four. What's happening in an electric motor, okay? So what happens is it works on electricity, right? So the uh, current flows through these wires, right? Yeah, it makes a spin. So how's that work, right? So as current flows through these coils of wire, right? So we have current flowing what does that create? It's gonna create a magnetic field. The fact that there's coils of wire, it makes a stronger magnetic field. What happens is it interacts with a permanent magnet inside the motor. And so a magnet interacts with other magnets. As you played around magnets, you know, magnets can attract, they can repel if they are the same. South pole, south pole, will repel, north pole, north pole. So what happens as we create a magnetic field in these coils of wire, it causes the permanent magnet to rotate because it's interacting, right? It's being repelled by the same pole, um, trying to push away. And it starts to spin, okay? So it starts to spin. You can see in here, these parts of the motor, right? Here, you see those? So as, a, as it interacts and creates that magnetic field, as the current a wire goes to the coils, it'll begin to interact with the permanent magnets inside the electric motor and cause the electric motor to spin. And that's the whole point. We want it to, A, exactly. There you go, Brandon. So Brandon, you've been researching some electric motors lately, right? So you got it. Exactly. So there you go, guys. So the basics is creating, creating electric current, which creates a magnetic field, 
which interacts with magnets in the motor, and that will cause it to spin and power whatever you're trying to power with your electric motor, okay? Oh, Thomas, no, say it ain't so. All right, and then, um, so that brings us to the next question, right? The, the, the last station. The last station is a generator. Now think of a generator as the opposite, as the opposite. Now we've used these in class before, right? The hand crank generator. So what do we do? We use our mechanical energy, which is our kinetic energy, energy of movement to spin. This, this spins this little crank in here. It spins that one and they're spinning something in here that almost looks like a motor, right? And so this, an electric generator, is basically the opposite, the opposite of a electric generator is basically the opposite of electric motor. So if an electric motor uses electric current to make a magnetic field that interacts with the magnets inside the spin, we're doing the opposite. We're spinning a magnet. So in here, there'd be like a magnet being spun. So it's flipping north, south, north, south. So it's changing its, its um, orientation. It's changing its magnetic field, north, south, north, south. It'd be flipping back and forth as you, as you spin it. And so changing the magnetic field, what does that do? That creates an electric current. So it creates electric current that flows through the wires. And you could attach something here, or you could put a light bulb in there if you want. But you could attach wires to here and power different things. Um, and the faster I turn it, I could create the more current. And you have saw that in class before when you first used these. Um, so think of an electric motor and an electric generator as kind of opposites of each other. They work opposite ways. They both use the same principle, which is the fancy word for what we're learning electromagnetic induction so you can impress your friends and family with that term electromagnetic induction it's a fancy word for meaning we can use electricity to create magnetism we can use magnetism to create electricity okay and it's the simple principle that change in a magnetic field creates electric current and electric current creates a magnetic field um, so that's, that's the sim simple way of thinking it. That's it in a nutshell. So you have your notes today to help you through those, um, to help you through the lesson, but that's it. It's a fancy word called electromagnetic induction. And there's a lot of cool things we use this for. We use it to make electromagnets. We use it to make electric motors. We use it to make generators. So if your power goes out and you hook up a generator, that's how it's working. A gasoline power generator, instead of using your kinetic energy, okay? By the way, if you see the um, YouTube video, that's pretty cool, right? They use the hamster to spin the wheel. So instead of you spinning it, you put your hamster to work. But same thing, that hamster, what's that hamster spinning? It's spinning a magnet around, and it's changing the magnetic field, and that's going to create an electric current through some wires that's powering that LED bulb you see in that. And we're going to do some more of this tomorrow, guys. So basically tomorrow, to give you a little more in depth, it's always best to kind of see what's going on, to see the electric fields, the magnetic fields as they're happening. And the only way we could do that, because you can't see with your eyes a magnetic field. Well, you sort of can if you have metal shavings and you put them on paper and you put a magnet, they'll form into this weird magnetic field pattern. I'll have to put up a video of that to show you guys what that looks like for tomorrow. Uh, it's all about KE, kinetic energy. But um, otherwise, you can't see it. You can't see it. You see the effects of it, basically, just like gravity. You can't see gravity, but you see the effects of gravity, right? You can't see energy, but you see the effects of energy. Same thing. The electric field, the magnetic field, you can't see it, but you see the effects. So tomorrow, we're going to be doing for our lesson a computer simulation. Because computers, they show you it, right? They, they, they show you the electric field, the magnetic field lines. Um, 
So we're going to play around with that a little bit, computer simulation tomorrow. So today's lesson is to give you kind of a basic introduction of some of the phenomenon, fancy word, phenomenon. Phenomenon just means, you know, the stuff that we see happen. You saw an electromagnet. How does that work? Or you have an electric motor powering your, your fan. Or, you know, you used a generator in class and you're like, well, what's inside making this work? So you can see a little visual of that on your assignment today because the assignment has like an open view of the generator showing the magnet spin. All right. I know, right? Brandon says, where would we be without computers, right? I mean, without computers, how would you even do your schoolwork, right? Some of you are probably hating computers right now. Oh, man, because of computers, I still have school. <sighs> but it's the best. You guys can still learn. So that's good. You guys can still learn. So that's good stuff. Um, so, yeah, a little more looking at a little bit more of, into the unseen, what's happening beyond the phenomenon. So today's assignment was just exploring phenomenon through a virtual kind of a virtual stations. Check this out. Check this out. Things we would do in class, but we couldn't do in class because we can't be in class. All right. <laughs> and tomorrow you'll get a little bit behind the scenes view using a computer. Oh, here's the electric field or whatever. Um, and kind of get a little more depth of what, what's happening with tomorrow's assignment. But again, still pretty, still pretty basic and easy for you guys. So no problems with that. All right. So electromagnetic induction, a fancy word for the phenomenon of, and phenomenon's a fancy word for everyday events that we see. All right. So we're using science, physics to explain everyday events, how electric motors and generators work and all that stuff. So electromagnetic induction using electricity to create magnetism. All right. Using magnetism to create electricity. All right. Ah, I like that, Thomas. Thomas said if there were no computers, we'd be off social media and outside every day. It's true. So sad, actually. I feel like you kids are missing out. You kids are missing out a little bit because of social media, you know. Um, so that's about it, guys. So the assignment, let me see how many people got through it so far, right? So looking at the assignment. I'm looking to see. All right, we got a couple people. Ah, I got a couple people turned it in already. That's good. That's good. That's good. Ah, even more. Even more people turned it in. Yes. All right, good. So a lot of people turned it in. That's good, guys. Keep working on it. It doesn't take too long. It doesn't take too long. It doesn't take that long. The phenomenon's there on your assignment, or there's a few links you got to go to. Some of them are pretty entertaining. The hamster one, I love that one. Uh, <laughs> that's just crazy. And uh, the questions, answer the questions. And uh, yeah, don't forget to submit, hand in your assignment. And that's that, guys. So if you get stuck or have any questions on it, like Sal I was having problems with the link, he sent me an email. So definitely reach out to me on Google Classroom via email or whatever. And uh, I'll get back to you as soon as I check it and see it. Well, hopefully it's all good, guys. So keep on top of your work. Keep checking Google Classroom. Tomorrow, going to give you a new assignment, a little bit of a computer simulation to play around with. Um, so it should be good. We've used these simulations before. It's through the website FET, P-H-E-T. You might remember, but I'll put the link in the assignment. No worries about that. And we're going to keep exploring this phenomenon of electromagnetic induction, electromagnetism, right? Electricity creating magnetism, magnetism creating electricity. and Interesting thing. So you saw some phenomenon that happened there and some applications, electric motors and uh, electric generators. So Thomas is getting ready to head out. I'm getting ready to head out soon too, guys, because um, it's lunchtime. And my computer's at 13% right now. I got to charge this bad boy, 13%. So, guys, if there's no, any last-minute questions, we're about to end this in a minute. So if you have any last-minute questions, let me know. I'll put away my bag of tricks here. Unfortunately, I didn't have everything, guys. I thought I had. I must have left. There must be one more bag of stuff I left at school. I thought I had everything here to demonstrate some stuff, but apparently I didn't grab everything. That's the tricky thing about being away from school. But um, the assignment, though, has everything you need on it. So we took the real world and we put it in some animations and things like that so you could see. 
So, yep, guys, work on getting me that golden play button. I appreciate that. And uh, any questions, shoot me email, text, Google Classroom, guys. And uh, make sure you get that work done today. Please tell your friends, hey, log on Google Classroom, get Mr. Huebney's work done. It is lit. Literally lit. You're going to be lighting up light bulbs. Actually, not today. No light bulbs line up. But you could with the electric generator. You could. Anyways, guys, I'm out. I'm about to eat lunch and then go ahead and look at some of those assignments you guys sent me. Do some grading. Any more questions, send them my way. All right. All right, guys. Thanks for joining today. And uh, keep it real. I'll see you tomorrow at noon again. And if you have any questions or comments or whatever, shoot me the email or Google Classroom. Message me. Whatever is clever. Talk to you guys later. 12% on my computer. Got to go. Got to charge this bad boy up before it shuts down. Bye, 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 Brandon. Sound like a boy band. Bye, bye, bye. Wasn't that a song? Anyways, all right, guys. I'm out. End of the stream. Peace.